Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. The hand-driven machine known today as the Gatling gun was invented in 1861 after the Civil War broke out. This gun was designed to create a more efficient and effective weapon system other than the muskets and bayonets that were commonly used in battle at the time. The Gatling gun is a rapid-firing, multi-barreled firearm. The military can use it to hit targets from low-flying aircraft in what's known as strafe runs, making it one of the most used weapons of the U.S. troops since the late 19th century. The first set of Gatling guns had six metal barrels arranged in a circle, a configuration maintained by the new generation of Gatling guns. The barrel will continue to move after each round is fired, and the barrel is reloaded with another bullet. This same mechanism is now developed to a more devastating effect in modern Gatling guns. Which have lighter weights and can fire more than 1,300 shots per minute. Providing superior firepower in a lightweight system. This gun might be 150 years old, but the new generation of Gatling guns retains the same lethal efficacy. The United States Marine Corps uses UH-1Y aircraft to conduct intense training exercises for its personnel with the Gatling gun. The UH-1Y Venom is a twin-engine utility helicopter. It's used by the Marine Corps to demonstrate live fires and close air support using a GAU-17A Gatling gun. A GAU-2150 caliber machine gun and a 70 millimeter rocket launcher. The GAU-21's metal ammunition belt guide system helps to lower the chance of misfeeding the gun. And the helicopter is flown at a low altitude to improve the accuracy of the firing shots. Here you can see a UH-1Y being loaded up with ordnance. Ammunition must be loaded into the weapon before takeoff. The UH-1Y is typically flown by a pilot, a co-pilot, a crew chief, and a gunner. The troops conduct the handling operations and training of their mounted lethal gun in environments that closely mirror what is expected in combat zones. The crew is restrained by a monkey harness, which prevents them from falling out of the cabin. The helicopter has a wide side door and one of the technical skills required is the capacity to hit the target from a moving helicopter while avoiding rotor downwash. In addition, the UH-1Y can have a countermeasure system using flare and shafe dispensers as self-defense mechanisms.
Even in the early days of aerial combat, pilots knew that threats were not only confined to the air. Introduced in 1977. The American Air Force employs the A-10 Warthog as a close air support aircraft. Although it can be fitted with various weapons, the GAU-8 Avenger Gatling gun is its most distinctive weapon. In fact, this fighter jet is primarily designed for this weapon system. The GAU-8 Avenger is a 30 millimeter hydraulic driven cannon. with seven rotating barrels that measure 7.5 feet long and weigh 70 pounds each. This is the, uh, the, the casing uh, for the round. And these are actually, they stay within the gun because uh, if you were to spit these out, like a lot of times other guns will, uh, so much ballast and the center of gravity of the aircraft will come off so much that you have to keep it in. Um, a normal combat burst is what we call it. It's a two second uh, squeeze. So with the gun spinning up, it's around 112 rounds for uh, two seconds. A Paveway bomb is attached to one of the A-10 wing hardpoints during loading. And all precision guided and unguided munitions are affixed to the aircraft by specialized ordnance personnel. There is an ammunition loading adapter that is used on the 30 millimeter gun. The aircraft's hydraulic system powers the loading adapter, which is attached to the aircraft with the locking head. The A-10 system is designed such that it has the capacity to upload and download bullets to the gun system simultaneously. Officially known as the Thunderbolt II, this aircraft can fire at an incredibly high rate of 3,900 RPM. giving it excellent features for strafe runs when a low-flying aircraft fires with a machine gun at a very close range. Its enormous fuselage and cockpit can withstand direct hits from high explosive and armor-piercing projectiles. Thanks to its extremely resilient airframe, this is important because making low and slow strafing runs at heavily armed opponents demands a lot of ballistic protection. Strafing runs on an A-10 can be extremely lethal. As every two second trigger pull on the aircraft unleashes approximately 130 millimeter rounds on the target. resulting in a catastrophic effect. While not particularly fast, the Thunderbolt is a formidable opponent when it comes to strafing attacks and air-to-air -air combat. However, many missions call upon aircraft to destroy ground targets, whether they represent an aerial threat or not. The United States military also used the Lockheed Martin F-35 for strafe runs. The F-35 is a single-seat, single-engine, all-weather stealth multi-role combat jet. The strafe runs on this stealth jet are carried out by a GAU-22A gun located on the left side of the aircraft. The GAU-22A is a four-barrel, 25-millimeter Gatling gun that can fire rapidly up to 3,300 rounds per minute, making the already lethal fighter jet even more deadly. 
In addition, the Gatling gun mechanism can be computerized and incorporated into the fighter jet software. allowing the pilot to identify and eliminate targets using a helmet-mounted display system. What makes the F-35 great is its uh, stealth capability, the ability to get to the target undetected by uh, ground and air threats, and also the, the fusion, the sensors. So me as a pilot, uh, it pulls in all the information that the sensors detect and, uh, and passes that to me, and it thereby increases the, the lethality of all the other fighters airborne. To maintain its stealthy signature, the aircraft carries all the weapons inside the weapon bay. And it's also capable of externally transporting weapons and more than 8,000 pounds of ammunition. There are four weapon stations spread across its two internal weapon bays. The weapons bay on a stealth fighter is typically kept closed. This is because opening it would increase its radar reflector and risk losing its stealth signature. However, this impressive arsenal catalog in the weapon bay doors on the jet can be shown to the public in a low maneuver run. Loading this weapon system requires an absolute level of precision and accuracy. And it requires the expertise of the crew members for the success of the loading operations. The F-35 has two wings, with three pylons under each wing. These external pylons are capable of transporting 2,000-pound class air-to-ground weapons. And its inboard station is built to support up to 5,000-pound loads, including external fuel tanks. The midboard pylon, which has a carrying capacity of 2,500 pounds, is primarily designed for air-to-ground weapons. The surface attack weapons compatible with these pylons are similar to the ones in the internal weapons bay. The AIM-9X Sidewinder and other short-range infrared guided missiles are loaded and launched from the outboard air-to-air -air station on each wing. Its main weapon bay can hold six AIM-120 advanced medium-range air-to-air missiles. Loading this fighter is one thing. Being able to use the weapons loaded effectively is another thing entirely. This exercise trains the Marine Corps officers operating the F-35, known as the Warlords, to test the F-35 fleets at their disposal using paveway practice bombs, which are simply non-exploding concrete bombs. The training includes instruction on enemy air-to-air -air and air-to-ground weapons. As well as a variety of other techniques, this gives the participants the technical skills necessary to manage a battlefield scenario. The ultimate goal is to be able to deploy officers after training rather than before training. The use of Gatling guns on aircraft and strafe runs have become an integral part of modern day warfare. Ranging from close air support, search and rescue operations, combat assault support, and casualty evacuation, 
they have given the Air Forces of the Marine Corps flexibility in their tactical operations. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. We'll see you next time.